We are live. Very well. I'll call the COC meeting to order. Uh, the first order of business is for the flag salute. So, if you all follow me, I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America, America and to the republic, to the republic, for, which republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God. Under God. Indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and, and justice, justice for all. all. Okay. Um, are there any emergency additions or modifications to the agenda? Hearing no, I will move on to approval of the agenda. Do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? I make a motion to approve the agenda. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, I hear the motion is made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Kathy, you, I guess you usually call the roll, don't you? Please. Yeah, let's do that. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, Member Norris? Aye. Member Hook? Aye. Member... Wilson is not present yet. Member Hooper? Here. Member Tofel? Present. And Member Burkett? Here. That passes 5-0. Thank you. Takes me a little while to get back into the swing of things. We haven't met for a while. <laughs> uh, has everybody had a chance to look at the uh, uh, committee meetings for June 17th, 2020. Uh, any comments on it? Do I hear a motion to approve them? I'll motion to approve. Thank you, is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Kathy, could you call the roll please? Member Hooper, uh, Member Hooper. I'm now voting to approve the minutes. That's what I'm doing now, right? Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, Member Norris? Yes. Member Hook? Yes. Member Hook, approval of the minutes? Yes. Member Tofel? Yes. And Member Burkett? Yes. Thank you. Five zero. That carries. Okay. Dr. Morse, could you swear in member Burkett and Wilson? I can, I can uh, except maybe not Wilson since Wilson's I don't- Wilson's not here. However. She's here. Uh, but I first want to thank all of you so much for your time and effort being here tonight. It's um, this, with our Measure K work, this has become, uh, it's, there's a lot of people who are very interested in your work. So thank you for your time. And I am very pleased to add uh, a member tonight. So Jennifer, if you could just repeat after me and I'll try and stop uh, when it seems like a good place for you to remember what I just said. Okay. Um, so I, I Jennifer Burkett, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the constitution of the United States, that I will support and defend the constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation without any mental re reservation or purpose of evasion or purpose of evasion and that I will well and faithfully and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter discharge the duties in which I am about to enter Great, that was a long one at the beginning. Sorry about that. <laughs> I need to like have marks where I pause, but congratulations. Thank, thank you so you. much for your work and joining our committee. And uh, thank you to all of you. And 
I'm going to leave you now so I can get ready for a school board meeting in an hour. But thank you so much and have a great meeting. Thank you, Tiffany. Thanks, Tiffany. Okay, have there been any public comments? We have received no public comments. Okay, I would now receive uh, information from uh, Mr. Dutter and Mr. White regarding current construction projects and those slated for 2020 to 2021. All right. Let okay. Let me... All right. Who is the host? Alan, are you host or is it just uh, Bill? I, I think it's David and it was Tiffany as a co-host, maybe, maybe Bill. Let me see. Okay. Uh, David Rogers. I, it looks like I'm a co-host. <laughs> okay. Can yeah, you? I made uh, you a co-host, Adam. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. And then I'll share my. Uh, thanks, David. Yeah, I was on. I was having trouble right. getting my uh, laptop to link in, so I just used my phone. No worries. Can you all see the uh, slide, the PowerPoint now? Yes. Yes. All right. Perfect. Uh, so this is just a quick slideshow. I know we're going to do a tour. I think uh, we'll discuss that later in terms of future meeting dates. But this is a, kind of a quick down and dirty slideshow of uh, what we've been doing all summer. And uh, actually since uh, March when all the kids, uh, unfortunately, were not allowed back on campus, um, we've been able to actually ramp up construction. So, um, you know, some good, some bad, of course. So this is a uh, initial shot of the new dining hall at Matilla Hall. Uh, this is kind of looking in from the quad, essentially, of, of Matilla Hall, looking into those two large openings will be large roll-up garage doors uh, with new outdoor seating and whatnot. So, and then you'll go into uh, the, the interior of the dining hall. So uh, the, the main comments we keep hearing about this are how much bigger it is, and it, it is... It is pretty substantially bigger than what was there. Um, next is the Nordoff Library. And Alan, feel free to jump in since you're obviously boots on the ground on these a lot more than I am, so. Sure, I was, uh, uh, what you see those, those green wrapped up light fixtures are actually LED lights that are smart lights. And then you see some other, what appears to be light fixtures that are circles in the ceiling. That is not actually a light fixture, that's a solar tube. And what you're seeing there is sunlight and the light that's in this picture is only the sunlight that's coming in from those solar tubes. Yeah. And so that's free, that's free lighting. And the great thing about the smart lights is that um, they, they uh, sort of sense how much light is in the room and only come on with enough power to bring the light level up to where we want it. So it, on a sunny day, they might only be at 25% capacity. And on a, on a nighttime or rainy day, they might be at 100%. So um, uh, what, and what you're seeing there on the left side would be uh, looking towards the east wall. And that's where the checkout desk would be for books and things. And then on the, on the right side is looking to the west wall. And there are conference rooms in that back right corner um, and, and a larger conference room in the back left corner. The uh, and the the large uh, plywood sheets that you see will be new uh, storefront aluminum storefront doors and everything for uh, allow even more natural light in. Right. Uh, here's a project uh, out front of Nordoff that uh, started as a drainage project. I think we saw the beginning of this on our initial walk. Um, this the picture on the left. You know, it used to be just get. Uh, tons of water, mud, all of the above when it would rain. Um, so we decided to put in some pavers, put in some drains, and those concrete uh, rectangular pieces you see, they're actually footings for the new rock benches uh, that we put in. Um, I know so a lot of you guys have probably seen this already driving by Nordoff, um, but uh, this should, not only does is it curb appeal, uh, it fixes the drainage problems, and actually, uh, in, it actually uh, oops, Daryl. actually enhances our security as well, because this is the main drop off and pickup area for Nordoff. Uh, so should, you know, uh, foot slip or whatever, these benches will block them from any car from entering the corridor as well. And this is on the left is what it would originally look like during a rainy day. 
uh, as you can see, it was quite the issue. Um, on the right is the, the finished product. Nice. Yeah, and here's another one. And we were able to, uh, I think we discussed the Nordoff logo. So these Nordoff, this logo is actually baked into the pavers. Um, so no fail, no nothing, uh, no color discoloration over time. Uh, so here's kind of the, on the left is the, the whole, uh, the whole F wing project we call it. So. Yeah, you'll notice that those are natural stone blocks that are not only benches for uh, kids while they're, while they're waiting or doing an outdoor classroom or something, uh, because that is a drop-off zone. Uh, but they're also, uh, weigh about, uh, three to four, three to 5,000 pounds a piece, depending on their length. And uh, so they would uh, be a safety feature to keep people from running into the building with their car. Um, and the original, the original amount authorized for that, when we were going to buy these as benches that come from England, was like thirty-four thousand dollars, and we got these yeah. installed for twenty-eight thousand uh, dollars. Uh, or you know, so we saved about six grand by using the natural stone blocks that come from Oklahoma instead of shipping in concrete blocks from England. We had some umbrellas and tables out there. Is that temporary or permanent? The uh, the tables were something that uh, the NPA purchased actually, uh, as well as umbrellas. Uh, the NPA purchased those too. So that's the the Nordoff Parent Association has purchased those. Uh, and when school's in session, uh, a lot of the teachers, you know, allow the kids to go out and do the do some of their work or their reading in this area already. So now they have uh, benches as well as uh, the rock benches, as well as the, the four top benches. So true. Very inviting. Yeah, it, it, it's very nice. It's actually a, a nice indoor outdoor space. Uh, Nordoff basketball courts. We, uh, we repaved all of those, um, fixed some of the drainage issues. On the right, we put in a whole new apron into the gym. The concrete there was pretty hammered. Uh, and we ran a new ribbon gutter, as you can see there on the right, all the way down to the tennis courts. There was an existing one basically from the tennis courts out uh, to the field in the back, uh, but the water never got there. Um, anything from the gym or from the locker rooms further down between the, the gym and the pool never got there. So now everything will run out and either run towards the parking lot or into the ribbon gutter and then out into the field as it's designed. Uh, the bathrooms, we went through and we uh, redid all the student bathrooms on Nordoff campus. Uh, so here's, you know, before and after of uh, one of the, the this is the A-wing, the girls A-wing bathroom. And not only did we do uh, an FRP wall all the way around, uh, which is cleanable, it's easily replaced. Should anything happen, they can simply replace one of those four by eight sheets. Uh, and our maintenance staff can do that as opposed to tiling the whole bathroom, which we, which was done at some other bathrooms uh, years and years ago. If the tile is damaged, they don't make the tile. Uh, plus it's pretty labor intensive. Uh, this is a lot much easier, much cleaner. Uh, we also obviously did the blue epoxy floor, which are, which will last, you know, 20, 25 years with the school logo, a little school pride in there. Uh, and then being in the midst of the of COVID, we actually installed all new touchless uh, fixtures in the bathroom, touchless faucets, soap dispensers, and hand dryers. And we've actually worked with our ops team David and David's team to standardize this. So going forward, all bathrooms will receive the, the exact same faucet, uh, soap dispenser, and hand dryer. And here's the boys D-wing before and after as well. Uh, waterless, we are, the team had already installed uh, waterless urinals. Uh, so we were able to keep those and we just took them off, took all the tile down, did the FRP and the new floor. And then here's the girls D-wing bathroom as well, just another shot. We painted the Nordoff cafeteria and uh, since I've done this update, we've actually, we're painting the rest of the campus. So as you guys drive by, check it out. But on the left is the cafeteria beforehand. On the right is uh, the new colors. We kind of went back to the original Nordoff colors. 
there was a few different shades of, of blue, a few different shades of yellow, and a few different shades of white um, all around the campus. So we're able to standardize that now. Uh, and we're able to do a little bit brighter, again, kind of going back to the original Nordoff colors. Uh, so it, it really pops. And if anybody who's driven by Nordoff in the, next, in the last week or so, uh, you guys can see it from the road and it's, it's, it's extremely nice. Uh, it, it looks clean, it looks bright, um, and it really pops off on the campus now. So the dining hall, you wanna take this one, Alan? Uh, yeah, so what we're looking at here is on the left side was we just when we were doing the framing, you can see the wood glue lamb beams that are going over the patio uh, area. Obviously, that area is now all concreted in um, and the walls are up and the stucco is even up on the exterior wall. Uh, then the picture on the right would be the interior. And that, again, is where walls are going to be. We would be standing in a storage area. There's a washing area in that room uh, immediately in the middle. And then the far back wall would be the, uh, the kitchen preparation ovens and, and a kitchen prep, et cetera, that sort of thing. And then on the far back on the right, which is where I see Adam's picture, <laughs> is actually the dispensing area where there are uh, d uh, food dispensers and cash registers and things like that. So the dining hall itself, this is all kitchen and kitchen prep storage area. And immediately to the right of that picture would be the begin the dining hall. And again, this is just outdoor progress as well. Yeah, the and roofing is now done. The uh, uh, the HVAC is in. The uh, you know the structural work is, is done. We're doing things like stucco and concrete, exterior concrete, and finishing work on the inside with drywall and painting. And uh, the electricians finishing up some lighting and some things like that. So it's really coming along. We're looking for a you know maybe our, our target date is is uh, November fourth to be complete. And the, the, the library and the dining hall have a, a similar target date, pretty, pretty close, so. Yeah. And here's the interior of the dining, of the dining hall. And on the right, you can see the, this is the, the actual dining hall cafeteria. And on the right there, that opening is the, where my cursor is, that is actually the, the, one of the serving line. Uh, on our tour, I know we uh, visited this and we actually stood out here talking about this for a little while. Uh, this is the Matillaha, obviously basketball courts and playground area. What we did is obviously we took out all the old asphalt and we actually extended it up on the other side of the gym uh, to add more square footage for uh, not only the PE classes, um, but also for the community. Um, if anybody drives by at, you know, six, six 30, we drove driven by the last couple nights and there's, you know, there, there's 20 to 30 people out there using these courts already. Um, we actually, uh, we actually added another half a court and we added three volleyball courts out there. And so we upgraded the rims and the backboards to nice glass backboards, assuming that not only is it nice for the students, but it's nice for the community. A lot of uh, Ojai youth basketball is played at Matillaha, both indoor and practiced outdoor. Uh, and obviously some of the uncertainty with COVID, we could be, uh, a, there could be a lot of outdoor basketball coming in our, in our future. Uh, so we upgraded it and added, and it was nice. Not only did the crews finish it, they are in, on the left here, you can see the new courts and kind of the new layouts. Um, the crew was had just hadn't even cleaned up yet, and people were already using the new the new courts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, before so. they striped it or anything, they were out there, and it, it's it's fun yeah. and exciting for us to go by and see all those people playing. You know, in the evening. Yeah, and we uh, reoriented the courts too. They used to run north south, and you can see here they kind of run east west. Uh, and that was at request of Brent Muth and uh, um, Doug, one of the two of the PE coaches out there, just stating that look, you know not only if somebody misses the basket, the, the ball would go down all the way down onto the track and run down. But uh, in December, when the P uh, classes did their basketball unit, they couldn't see as they were shooting south because of the sun uh, it was directly in their eyes. So they actually couldn't even see the basket. So their request was return it and it actually created a lot more space and 
uh, cut from where the picture is on the left, uh, that's where the volleyball courts are as well. And there's one up top in the new space. <laughs> There'll be a lot of uh, activity around the, the gym. Did yeah. uh, my small request for those railings get through into the time frame? I it, don't want to keep pestering you about it, but there must be a timeline someplace. Yep, it's actually in the works right now. We met with the fence company, and uh, they're they're giving us a drawing, and we're going to run it by the architect just to make sure it meets ADA standards, and then it'll be installed. So we haven't forgotten about it. Um, I Thank just, you. Thank you. I just want to add that um, my son, who's in eighth grade at Matilha, plays on those courts every single day at lunch, like religiously. And we drove in there two weeks ago to because we were doing something with the Boy Scouts to paint over the old mural because we were redoing the mural. And um, we pulled back there and I, the, you, I wish I had recorded the shout of joy when we pulled around that corner and he saw those courts. So I just want you to know that in our house, you have made a Matilla student so <laughs> happy. Uh, thank you. Yeah, we- That's so great to hear. <laughs> That's a good news story. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I got a call last night actually from uh, Dan Palatial who runs one of the club basketball uh, programs or the club basketball program in town. And he called and he's like, dude, I just want to tell you, there's 30 people out on the field, out on the courts, and it's not even any of our kids. He's like, it's just community members. So he was super excited, of course. So uh, it's nice to see the use, like Alan said. It's nice to put something in and see the use immediately. Um, another project in Matillaha was the sewer. Basically, we've been able to put in all new sewer for the whole west end of the campus. So everything from the dining hall all the way to the gym now is brand new. Um, we were going to, the dining hall was obviously going to tie in, uh, once we did the sewer inspection and oh, high sanitation is great working with us, help cameraing the lines, showing us where the brakes are. Um, and this one was, uh, had a few different brakes in it. So it was determined that we should just replace the whole thing all the way around. And on the picture on the left, you can see it kind of skirts around the out, the, uh, east side of the track that way. We didn't actually have to disturb the track or go through the field or anything like that. Did you have a, a sense of how old the old sewer system that you guys replaced was? What's your um, estimate on that? I don't know. I don't know how old it was. I know it was extremely old. It was old uh, clay pipe. And uh, so it's, it had at least three or four breaks in it. I don't, I honestly, it was probably put in when the dining hall was put in. We, we did find some buried coins that had the face of C, the head of Caesar on them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you think it was put in the seventies or something? It was like forty years old. Yeah, I, I was. My my guess it's probably older than that, to be honest with you. But yeah. Wow. So it's. You no, know, it's just it's just an interesting as we as a community contemplate what our campuses need moving forward you know it's it's a little bit eye-opening to understand how old some of these systems are on our campuses yeah and this is uh obviously matillaha we still have the east side of campus which will be a little more uh in depth and a little harder to get to just because of the classrooms mm -hmm. uh, but yeah i mean to your point Kara, we do have you know the other campuses are not far behind this so yeah uh, it'll be something that we tackle hopefully mm -hmm. There's an election coming up, and you're showing a lot of what was before, how run down things were. And I don't think the public sees the before and after when you're investing money in, in school repair. Is there uh, any possibility of pulling these slides on a community board or a community? Uh, they're actually uh, posted. We do a slideshow, uh, a similar uh, PowerPoint uh, for every board meeting. So the last, uh, the last couple board meetings, we've had one and we have one coming up for next Wednesday's uh, school board meeting as well. And it shows, uh, all of those typically show the before and after. You know, this is what Nordoff looked like before painting. This is what it looked like after. Um, well, uh, Adam, to John's point, I, I think that Linda could probably put these on our Facebook page as well, you know, after yeah. the board meeting. Yeah, we could. The The links for these are obviously on the board agenda. They're on the COC agenda. Uh, but yeah, we can definitely ask Linda to put, put some of these on our Facebook page as well. That's a good idea. The public could, 
the public could, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, they call it, uh, no, what's the word? To communicate through the communications of the public because yeah. they can see these Don't pictures. Show me. Yeah. I think the pictures are worth a lot. They are. A lot more than words in an article. Yeah, that's, and that it, you're right, because that's one reason we started doing it for the board meetings, because it is, it's hard to describe how the, the shape that some of our campuses were in and, uh, um, and just the, the age that they are. So um, as we get going, yeah, it's been nice. So we'll, we'll talk to Linda about posting some of these as just individual items as well. Uh, San Antonio Wood Repair. We went out and we, we started doing uh, some of, the, one of the line items in Measure J was redoing the termite damage to the front porch out at San Antonio, um, which we all know is one of our older buildings as well. Uh, the picture on the right is one of the large uh, 10 by 10 beams that ran up to hold the porch up. That's the bottom of the beam. Um, and on the left was the footing. So some of these had concrete some of them didn't, some of them you can see were just an empty hole that had a couple boards shoved in the bottom to hold the, to hold the post up as well. Um, so we were- In fact, we, we found some of those, some of those uh, columns were not actually even touching the footing. Yeah, this, this was the first one they took out actually. And they took it out because they went over and rattled it and they could just take it out. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't connected obviously anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, so what we did as part of the new project is these footings on the left, we actually filled those in with concrete and raised them up about half an inch. So, you know, and then put a steel plate on the bottom of all the new beams. So everything sits off the ground, even the even the footings on the left that weren't this bad, that had a, that were filled with concrete actually had about a half an inch indention. So the board, the beams just sat in the water, even, uh, in the concrete. So. Which is why we wanted to put a half, raise it a half an inch so that water doesn't stand there. Exactly. Uh, so on the right is the brand new columns. You can see the, the those vertical columns. Those are the ones that we that I just showed you. Um, and down on the bottom, you can actually kind of see the the raised uh, new foundations. Uh, so we replaced all the verticals, the post rail fence there. Um, we put in all new gutters around there. Uh, the gutters were. Uh, severely undersized for the roof. And we chose not to do them when we redid the roof last summer, uh, knowing that we were gonna have to do some extensive wood repair as well at that time. So now the water that comes off that steep pitched roof uh, will, will land in the gutters as opposed to just bypassing the gutters before. Also might mention that those uh, in the picture, as you say, the picture on the left, you see those, those vertical boards on the gable those aren't actually boards. Those are fiber uh, reinforced concrete. Yeah. <laughs> for woodpecker, woodpecker, you know, damage. And we actually, that gable, um, when we pulled those vertical boards off, um, it was discovered that there was no moisture barrier behind there either. So when the building was built, uh, they just, you know, they, they put up the, the mesh and threw up the plaster and the boards. And so it was, it was no wonder that some of that stuff was rotting out. So we actually ended up taking all the plaster off, all the board, all the vertical boards, um, and essentially redoing that whole gable uh, with the proper water, uh, water moisture barrier. And like Alan said, we use those cement fiber boards uh, for A, moisture, and B, to hopefully deter the woodpeckers out there. Was there a uh, question? The word that? I was looking for was social media. Yes. Uh, if these pictures be put on a, uh, a website uh, for the uh, election, which is, you know, just around the corner. People that really uh, want to know what's the money going for, well, this is where the first round went. And it's so such a contrast. I, uh, you know, I've taught in these, you know, I was a teacher in the schools. And, and when you see how deteriorated schools can be, and then you see what can some, some bond money can do, it yeah. just wakes you up and say, oh my gosh. Yeah, it really does. And it's been, uh, right. it's been fun. I mean, it's been, it's a shame the kids aren't on campus, obviously, but it's, it's been actually really great for Alan and I to run through a lot of these projects. So, yeah. yeah. Um, next is the Topa playground. We did the same thing that we did at Matillaha. 
Uh, we completely took out the asphalt, regraded it, uh, put in all new asphalt, new backboards, new poles. Uh, same thing, we were able to redesign the playground a little bit uh, per the administration's request and actually put in a volleyball court over here, move the tetherball courts. And in the picture on the right, you can see the field and what would happen is the, the water would actually run straight off the field down across the asphalt and the pitch of the asphalt wasn't correct. So it would actually run across the asphalt and all the way down the corridor of the school. And so we, we were able to redo the grade to funnel everything to the appropriate drains. Um, so everything comes off the field and makes an immediate right and goes back behind that last classroom into the large storm drains. Or it go, if it does make it all the way across, uh, it funnels into the drain right by the handrail as opposed to heading down the corridor. Um, mm. And we were also, able, we kind of regraded that whole slope onto the field with kind of a, a reverse uh, slope. So as it comes down, it's got a little natural swale in it to, to make it head uh, west essentially. Uh, we were able to do a new Miners Oaks playground. Um, it was on the it was on the Measure K. Um, the one on the left is the old one. It's still standing currently uh, because the next the next phase of the of, of Miners Oaks is shade and then new asphalt uh, like the other schools are getting. Um, so it's easier to take it out actually once we get to the asphalt portion. Uh, but we were able to move the playground over to the other. Uh, smaller one. So we have a nice L supervision wise, everything's in one area. Now uh, it's away from the, uh, the eucalyptus trees, which are great, but they're a little unpredictable and they're getting extremely large and, but they are not on our property. Um, so we moved the playground onto on the new playground onto the other side. And we were actually able to get a really good deal on this playground. It was, it kind of fit our bill and uh, the company we were working with to get it knew we had been working with the plans and everything with them for a while. And uh, one of their other contracts pulled out at the last minute after they had already ordered the playground. And so we were able to save about 15% on the structure and about 10% uh, on the actual install costs as well by being able to just be ready more than anything. Um, so again, not one of the benefits of not having the kids there was that we were able to pivot and and knock it out really quickly. Nice contrast. Yeah, Adam, I you mentioned that. that. And uh, these look like Roman ruins over there to the left. They were, <laughs> it was a P, it was a PTA project. Yeah, the ones on the left are, uh, are 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 pretty old, and it was a PTA project, and it it has stood up extremely well. I gotta say, because it's I think twenty something years old, um, and it's. Yeah. It has stood up extremely well, uh, so it was it, it lived a good life, <laughs> needless to say. Adam, uh, did, you, did you mention that that the, the reason we got the deal on that new playground was that it had been canceled from another school due to yes. COVID? So yes. yeah. Um, and I know um, actually, on the, the one on the left, not only is it old, but they've had to block off the slide. Uh, the slide that tall is cannot be per new uh, state code, it cannot be an open slide uh, if, it's, if it's that tall. So you can see we have a similar height slide, but it's an enclosed slide on the left, on the right. Mm -hmm. right. And lastly is the new flooring. Um, this was a, uh, this was on the, on the list the whole time. It kind of got bumped to the top of the list, obviously due to no kids and due to COVID precautions. Um, so on the left is the, the the, the carpet that, again, like the playground in Miners Oaks, lived a good life, uh, but we were able to <laughs> switch over to an LVT uh, flooring, which is a, a vinyl tile, and we did, all the elementary schools have the same flooring now. Um, so we have the, the bamboo LV, look like bamboo LVT. We have the colors up at the sides, and we have walk-off mats at every exterior door now. We have walk-off mats to to hopefully get the dirt as, as much as the dirt as we can get off the kids' shoes, I should say, uh, before they enter onto the LVT. We, this was one of the test floors um, that we did over at Miners Oaks uh, before school uh, got out last March. Uh, we were able to test it in, a, in one of the rooms 
from uh, September to March and uh, it's cleanable. It's quick and easy to clean. It, it literally takes a Swiffer to clean it as opposed to um, vacuuming. And then also in the summer, the summer cleaning schedule for the operations, they're not going around and doing the deep cleaning of the carpets anymore. Uh, they'll be able to allot their time for other, other things. Um, so far, what the does feedback, LB, What does me, LBT stand for? Uh, luxury Vinyl Tile is what it stands for. Luxury Vinyl Tile. Yes. Um, well, it looks like luxurious, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, so, so far, the, the feedback from the teachers have been, has been positive. Obviously, everybody loves the look. Uh, the newness is great. It, uh, the, the cleanability, um, we'll, obviously we'll see once everybody comes back, but if nothing else, it, it definitely brightens up the room and with the colors, um, you know, one of the things we've been trying to do that Tiffany's, um, shown us as well as designing for joy and the colors definitely do that in the elementary classroom. So one of the things about this tile, the qualities of this tile is that, is that it's a 30 millimeter stick as opposed to what your normal residential would be 15 to 20. And right. so it's, it's really a heavy duty, heavy grade vinyl. And it also has an acoustic quality built into the underside of it that helps keep the echoes down and things like that. Yeah. Uh, so that is the end of the, uh, of the summer project update. We obviously are working on a lot of other things, but. Um, I just wanted to chime in about just back to the Topa Topa playgrounds. You know, that's another space that's used a ton by the Ojai Rec program for practices. And I've coached out there and uh, I'm like blown away by what that looks like. Like that's going to make a big difference for so many kids in this valley to have those really functional basketball courts. So that's great to see. Yeah, thank you. The next the, the next uh, round is um, Miners Oaks has the shade as well as the, the asphalt and basketball courts and San Antonio as well. Uh, we actually have a bid opening tomorrow for the San Antonio parking lot, uh, which includes the uh, ADA upgrades to the building A, which is a, a new handicap ramp, uh, ADA upgrades to the bathroom, um, and a proper parking lot for San Antonio with a pull an actual entrance off of Grand Avenue. Um, and we're actually separating the uh, the buses. We're putting a new bus drop zone up on Grand. So we'll separate the buses from the park, from the cars. Um, and we're moving the basket, the current basketball court over to allow for more parking spaces, a sidewalk that's drop zone. Uh, so safer access for the kids as well. Yeah, that's an exciting project. And it spent six months waiting for DSA approval. <laughs> Yeah. Do you have a timeline for any of that new approval and work for the San Antonio parking lot and bus drop off? So San Antonio, we have the bid opening tomorrow, uh, assuming the numbers come back favorable, uh, which they, again, construction projects have been coming back very favorable. Uh, we will, it'll be on the board agenda next Wednesday, the 14th for approval. We'll issue the notice to proceeds uh, within a few days after that. And then the contractors can get started. Uh, we have, they have 30 days to complete the bathroom project, which is actually a bathroom and a new drinking fountain uh, on the, the drinking fountain that's closest to the basketball courts gets replaced. Um, and then the parking lot has 60 days duration. Naturally, you know, like Alan said, it sat in DSA for six or seven months and it was approved. And, uh, you know, now we're kind of coming out of this, but uh, we've been talking with uh, the administration over there, and the plan is to do either the bus lane first or the parking lot, and then kind of swap so there's uh, a usable entrance for all the parents there. Yeah. So total the 60 days. For the, yeah. Well, the buses for the bond, I, I would think, is you've been able to get a lot of uh, savings because it's people who want to go to work. Yeah, we, so, uh, uh, we have, we've been able to see quite a bit of savings, um, you know, and it, it seems to be getting, it just, a lot of the projects seem to be getting better and better savings wise. I mean, the Nordoff 
painting, for instance, came in, we have an extremely competitive price. Um, so we, we, we're, we've been very encouraged. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to uh, interrupt because I, as I mentioned before, some members have to leave by 6.30. So uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, other questions that need to be asked? If not, I'll also note that I welcome Daryl to the meeting. I think. Uh, yeah, I, I apologize. I apologize, you guys. I, uh, I um, was uh, behind at the office and still behind, but I knew I had this commitment. I at least wanted to show up even if it was late and leave early. <laughs> but what I heard was impressive. Um, and, um, you know, so kudos to you guys. Uh, sorry, I, I, normally I would be more talkative, but I got two things on my mind. So thank you. Thanks, thank you. And thank Kate, you, Kate, I saw Kate jumped in. Kate, welcome. Um, sorry, also everyone, I'm juggling a household and homeschool and <laughs> the best I can do to get on here. Bless you. Yes. I'm glad you could make it. Thank yeah. you. Um, so we'll, as we'll I said, you, I think we'll we need you, to... We Kate, do we'll need, get you sworn in at the next one. Yeah, we'll have to swear you in at the next meeting. Um, the next item on the agenda is to discuss how we complete the 2019-2020 uh, annual report. Adam or Alan, can you give kind of what the, what the process is for that? Sure. Uh, typically, uh, we will get the report in February, January, February. The audit uh, report. We'll get the audit report. Right. Uh, and then we can start discussing uh, how we want to put it together, What if, if there's any, any additions or subtractions we want to do from last year's report. Obviously, the goal is to uh, not be as rushed this year, uh, which we'll see in the, next, in the next agenda item is the meeting schedule. Um, and I don't think we will be rushed at all. Um, Kathy and I were talking, and I believe – uh, typically we get the report in January, but it's always, you know, plus or minus a few weeks. So the audit report, sorry. Right. Is it, does anybody have any questions or comments on, on, uh, how that, that report is completed? We all went, I think we all went through it this year. So. <laughs> it'll be, yeah. it'll be a little smoother cause it won't be as rushed and we can, um, like I said, I'll touch on the meeting schedule next and, uh, that kind of goes hand in hand with the annual report. I, right. I think that's a good idea. Let's move to that meeting schedule. Okay. Um, so regarding the meeting schedule, uh, we skipped November just because of looking at the schedule. We have uh, a board meeting as well as then we have Thanksgiving week. Uh, and the week before that is uh, there was a, a Veterans Day, I think. So Kathy and I thought. What, what, maybe, date, what date is the school board meeting? Uh, uh, which month? November 12th. Is November. It? November 18th. Okay, thank you. No problem. So the school board meeting is November 18th. Uh, and then I'm not sure, December 14th, I think is December's. Um, so the thought though is that we skip November. December, we do a campus tour because the library at Nordoff as well as the dining hall will be done. So we'll get to show off the, the fancy new digs there. Um, and then we wait for the, the audit report to come out. And then we have a schedule of February, March, and April. Typically, uh, in years past, April's not always needed. We schedule it. And if we need it, great, it's on the schedule. If not, we can cancel it. Um, I think with our crew that we have um, in and having gone through the last one, I think there's no doubt we can do it in February and March um, and April won't be needed, uh, but that's up to, to you all. And these dates that uh, Kathy and I and Bill put on there, they're just placeholders. If Wednesdays don't, doesn't work for somebody, by all means, let us know. We can do another day. Uh, the only thing is obviously the school board meetings, you know, we're, we're kind of going to do back to back Wednesdays, but if, Thursdays work. I know we have, you know, we all have a lot of schedules. We all have, you know, <laughs> a lot of us have kids at home doing Zoom and distance learning and all of the above. So um, you kind of let us know what, what you guys are thinking. Does anybody have any problems with those dates or concerns or questions about them? The only one that I would ask is uh, on the campus tour, do we want to set a time for that? 
Yes. Um, we're game. I'm, we're open. Obviously, we'll make it work. So. Oh yeah. You pick the time, we'll be there. Yes. Is, would nine o'clock work for most people? Nine in the morning? Not or? on a Wednesday for me. I'll be at work. Okay. Um. What's the? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the actual date for December. Sorry, it's December eighth. Oh, so that's a Tuesday. Yes, it is. It is. Yes. Okay. Um, I could do. I know this probably isn't popular, but I could do anything after three thirty, personally. It's, 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 it's going to start a, getting dark at that time, I think. Won't, won't is it a required meeting? The December eighth is required. It's not optional the way the last one was. I think it'll be up. I would say it's optional. Okay. It's optional. It's mostly again. It's going to mostly be a tour of kind of of the two the two new buildings. Um, and then we can obviously we, we won't we uh, Kathy I don't think we'll be we won't be conducting any business at that tour. No, I would say not. No. Agreed. So it would be optional. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if you guys are all available in the morning, then we'll optional me out. I just feel bad. I'm I'm open to anything. I think later <laughs> in the afternoon might be difficult because it's, at that in December it's going to be getting dark. Earlier. Yes, yeah. Um, anybody else have a suggestion? Not a suggestion, but just to add to mornings are better for me before anytime before noon. So if we maybe can get a consensus, if everybody can say what's best for them, we can just see what the majority is, maybe. Anytime in the morning, it's fine with me. Okay. Yeah. 9 a.m. Okay, can I propose nine? And uh, is that a, do we need to have a vote on that, Kathy? Uh, why don't we confirm all meetings and take one vote? Okay. Yeah. How about the other three meetings? A again, the April meeting might not be necessary, but uh, now February 10th is a, uh, a Wednesday. That's a Wednesday. And March 17th is a Wednesday. And the yep. meetings will be at 5.30. Okay. Any problems with any of those? Do I hear a motion to make that our schedule? A motion. I second. Any discussion? I hear none. Kathy, you want to call the roll? Member Norris. Aye. Member Hook. Aye. Member Wilson. Aye. Member Hooper. Aye. Member Toffel. Aye. Member Burkett. Hi. Member Gooden. He's gone. Daryl's gone. Okay. So that uh, carries with a vote of 6 0. Okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda is, is uh, whether or not any committee members have any suggestions of future agenda items. Yeah, you guys have any suggestions or uh, want anything from to be on the agenda discussed? You know, I would really, right? I I would like uh, just just something on the uh, ag next agenda that cl clarifies how much money is left for Measure J. Um, I think it would be helpful to get like a fuller picture of that and to get a clearer sense of what the timeline is for when that funding will literally run out. Okay. Yeah. Because I've been getting a lot of questions about that from people as I talk about um, the upcoming uh, vote. And so I think it would be helpful to get some clarity on that in the public record and help us understand that. Okay. No problem. I think that's a good point. We'll put that on the agenda for the next meeting. And that works out well because we tend to get that together for the board meeting anyway. So we can get that. We'll just put that up. We can make that a put, uh, like a monthly placeholder on our agenda as well. Okay. Right. Well, one other thing is just to maybe get some clarity too about. Um, I also have been feeling a lot of questions about like the in-house bond managers and staff, pay you know uh, salaries. So if we could just maybe get clarity about um, who, just to clarify that there. My understanding is no district employees would be 
on the payroll for Measure J work because the two are separate. So if we could just get is that correct. It's that you salaries for, for all employees who work on bond projects. It's not coming from district funds. That's correct. Correct. So if we could get yeah. some clarity about who is working on this and just clarity that they're not being funded by the district also, that would be helpful. No problem. Right. So in other words, yeah, there, Adam and I are strictly paid out of Measure J funds. And then we have a handyman that the board approved for, uh, for this summer uh, that is working strictly on Measure J projects and he's paid out of the Measure J funds. And uh, so there's a pretty clear line there. And that is also something that the audit uh, people will look at in terms of, you know, are we complying with the terms of the, of the bond? Uh -huh. So you guys manage all your secretarial work, for example, then? We have one assistant that does that does do some of the some of the administrative paperwork, mm -hmm. and the hours that she works on that thing are paid for out of the bond. They're separate. Okay. Does anybody have any other uh, items for the agenda for future oh, agenda? Should, items? I have a question. I don't know if this can be made into an agenda item, but. I was just curious if you guys typically publish the scoring on the bids or the bid criteria, and if that's something that we could see. I'm just kind of curious, you know, as things come in, if, if that's something we could look at is, you know, the scoring of the different contractors that bid on, say, the San Antonio project or other projects that are coming up. Mm -hmm. Sure. We can provide a public link to almost everything that we post, uh, anything that we post on the vendor registry as a public link. And we publish the accounting data sheet. After the bids are open, we write down whatever, who it was to bid, what their bid amount was, uh, what forms they completed, you know, that were required with the bid, if they're missing anything, that's all on an accounting bid sheet. And uh, we post that to the vendor registry. So uh, that would be, that'd be very easy. Yeah, so you share that. That would be kind of, I, th I would be interested to just, you know, see how that works and how you kind of stack up the vendors. Yeah, we by law have to post all of that, obviously, on our vendor registry, but we can, at the next agenda, we'll, uh, we'll provide the, we'll show the link as well. And uh, we can go back and show old, pro old projects and kind of show what's posted for the project as well as the bid accounting sheets. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Does that also include how much? the project ended up costing at that would be on the, of, that would be on the financial report it'll yeah. the okay. accounting sheet shows the bid obviously um it, but it won't include any change orders that would be on the accounting sheet okay mm -hmm. but that is available it's just in a different location absolutely okay thank you no problem any other questions or suggestions for agenda items? Um, it's on very short notice, but are, are we involved at all in the political uh, encouragement for the voting on the, the new bond? I think as a committee, we cannot be involved in that. Uh, Correct. Okay. Um, we did, as I think you know, we did at the last meeting, uh, uh, make a statement of, I'm not sure you call it support. Um, I, I think it's on, it's on the minutes from our last meeting. Yeah, I think it was a statement of support, correct, Kathy? A uh, recommendation to the board, yes. It, it was, do you have it there, Kathy? Well, here it is right here. I have here. it, I have it, you have it? So do I. Yeah, go ahead. The committee has monitored the good work and benefits of the project completed under the 2014 Measure J bond for the Ohio Unified School District. The committee values the consideration by the Board of Education of a future bond to address the remaining two thirds of the projects not considered during the original drafting of Measure J bond. The committee finds that the projects completed to date and the leadership of the district administration and bond managers has been successful. Yeah, so I think that's that's about all we can do as a as a committee. Correct. Correct. Individually, though, you can endorse Measure K. Yes, um, individually. Yep. That's something anybody can, anybody in the community can do. Right. Yes. 
if you have any questions about the Measure K, though, you can definitely reach out to Alan, myself, Tiffany, Kathy, any one of us, Linda Jordan. So, all right. Thank you. And um, if there is nothing further, I'll introduce, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Um, motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Seconded. Kathy, could you call the roll? Uh, Member Norris. Aye. Member Hook. Aye. Member Wilson. Aye. Member Hooper. Aye. Member Tofel. Aye. Member Burkett. Aye. And that motion passes six to zero. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. In that case, I declare the meeting.